All right, welcome back to the beautiful Pacific Northwest, a land of plaid and coffee. And I just wanted to say thank you guys so very much. Um, I know a lot of you guys right now are out and about camping and traveling with a family and all of that. Um, so real quick, uh, from this family, the Boozer family and the Pack West Bigfoot family, just want to say God bless you guys. And uh, we, uh, you know, always keeping our prayers for safe trips and whatnot. So there you go. Um, real quick, wanted to give a few, uh, just a couple little shout outs real quick to some good friends of mine out here. Gunner over at uh, Sasquatch Coffee, Monster X Radio, awesome, awesome, good stuff over there. Campfire Tales, Cryptids of America. You guys might want to check this out. I checked it out online the other day and ended up having a short, brief conversation on the old Facebook page and everything else, but you can find them over there on YouTube. Great, awesome, cool stuff going on over there. Um, also, Bigfoot's Wilderness, if you guys haven't been there, check that out on YouTube. These are just some good friends of mine, guys, places I love to get uh, more encounter stories and reports and stuff like that. And uh, also, um, real quick, <clears throat> I got a friend coming out, and uh, he is going to be introducing a new um, kind of a campfire-like stories as well for Bigfoot uh, called Guardian of the Woods. It's going to be coming out here in the next few weeks. So just wanted to kind of prep you for that. It's kind of awesome. It'll be really, really fun. And um, we're going to get started. <laughs> Let's just get started with this week's. That's right, PacWest Bigfoot Encounter Story, and this one is actually has been one of my favorites as of late, to be honest. Uh, this one actually comes from a friend of mine, a friend of mine, I'm not kidding, a friend of mine um, up around the uh, Portland, Oregon area, and uh, this, is, this is what was told to him, so here we go. Dear Joseph, you have a Bigfoot problem. Joseph, Oregon has a pretty scary secret. They have a Bigfoot roaming the ridges and hills that surround it. And it is not a nice one either. This happened back in 2009 while I was doing some basic renovations and house sitting for a friend of mine. Even he had no idea what, was, what he was sending me into in the end. But what it was was truly a nightmare and I will never return to that place again, ever. Here is what happened to me. Dear Joseph, it's over. I was doing a favor for a friend of mine when the scariest moment of my life had occurred and I found myself staring at a massive Bigfoot right out a window. Actually, I was only staring uh, for a moment. The rest of the time was spent packing up and getting out of there at daybreak. But let me start at the beginning for you. Besides, there were some crazy events that led up to that moment as well. And I mean crazy weird moments that should have warned me. As I said, I was staying there for a short period of time for a friend. I was not, nor have I ever been a resident of the town. It is a small and beautiful little town. Don't get me wrong. Like many small towns in Oregon, it is really quite picturesque. But this town also has a Bigfoot issue, a serious one. I started noticing some odd things on the very first day there and night. I was going to do a few odds and ends fixer-upper stuff around the newly acquired property my friend had bought as a vacation rental. Recently, before he bought it, he'd had a grandfather pass away and left a good amount of money to him and his sister. He decided to invest in property, a fixer-upper for himself and one in northeastern Oregon as a vacation rental. He was going to work on his, and, I, and he was paying me to work on the other. Both of us were in the construction industry at the time, but he moved on once this, all, this was all accomplished and the rental properties were running. He bought another place, not but a few months after these were finished. Um, this one, the one I was working on, well, he ended up selling for a huge profit real fast. This particular property sat back a ways from Willowa Lake, just outside of Joseph, Oregon. You could not see it from the property, but it was a very short hike down a trail to it. Either way, it had a great view of the mountains that surrounded it. It really is a beautiful place. The only issue was the monster it hides. Literally, a monster. The monster. But I had, I had reached Joseph, Oregon in, a pretty, in the pretty early hours on a Monday morning. And as I expected, the materials I needed were mostly there waiting for me. 
The house was not in all that bad a shape, really. It just needed some help here and there. One window, I noticed, was broken out, and the screen was laying on the ground about ten feet away from it. Weird, I thought to myself, but I figured some kind of, some kids or hooligans of some sort had come by and broke in. It was going to take me some time to fix it up, but I was paid more than I needed, <clears throat> and given weeks to a month to complete it all. It was more work than I let on, but I am a good worker and would get it done despite the issue. I also noticed when I took a look around that I would need to paint the place. There were, what looked like at least, scrapes and marks all over the walls along the first floor outside. About six to seven feet around the house up above, you could find them. They were a real eyesore. So I called my buddy, and he ordered the paint, and said he'd pay me a bonus to paint the whole house. I agreed. I got started that day. It was near evening when I would hear some strange stuff from along the ridges above me. I could not say, stay in, a, in the place just yet. It needed uh, some debugging, you could say, and there was no furniture. So, since I brought my small trailer with me, I stayed near the lake in a park for the time. But I was there it, I was there just starting on the window that was busted out when it was dark, getting dark at least. It was like a wind blowing over a bottle, a large bottle, but a howl could be heard. It was long, deep, and honestly, it was really eerie sounding. I looked over my shoulder and realized how late it was getting, and with the forest being that dark, well, it was time to get to the park for this city boy. I put everything away in the travel uh, type of lockbox and left it behind, uh, behind the house for the next day. And the next day, early morning actually, that box was laying 50 or so feet away from the house. It was not open, but it was not where I left it, and it was all scratched up. I mean, it was literally scratched up, with what seemed like claw marks. Cougar, or bear, was the preferred culprit in my mind. Boy, was I wrong wailing from the woods a weekend and even with some strange going ons I was getting into the swing of things and everything done on time even a bit faster than expected oh the strange stuff was just a feeling most of the time it was like that feeling of being watched and, and what not I noticed here and there I would catch myself looking over my shoulder into the woods and up the mountainside it was weird bit creepy in fact but I always got back to work and turned up the radio to drown it all out about the end of the second week and I heard something that really freaked me out wailing it was loud it was like like before but this time it was closer to the house and me this was extremely unnerving as the sound was nothing I was familiar with I may be a city boy from Beaverton but I am an Oregonian and that means I spend some time outdoors I hunt fish hike and I've been known to camp for a week or two when time allows. Never in my life had I heard such a sound. It was just a crazy wailing. It did not sound angry, but it did sound crazy, almost irritated in, in some way. I had no idea it was probably irritated with me and that it was something of legend that was actually real, a Bigfoot but I would soon enough. The third weekend, and that would be the scariest time of my life, and just so it is known, I have been in a firefight. Well, two, actually, in Afghanistan, so I know scared. The wailing stopped pretty abruptly, though. It lasted about a minute, and there were no more, uh, there were no more than, say, well, three bursts at the most, if I remember correctly. But as I said, it was closer this time, and I could tell it was not a bear or a mountain lion or anything else I'd ever heard in the woods of Oregon. My brain started to tell me what I felt my heart did not want to admit. I was hearing a myth that was actually, well, real. On sight, literally. There was a wailing, the chicken skin up the neck feeling from time to time while working away, the wailing and again, and now, by week four, I was staying on sight despite all of it. 
but this saved me money and the house was back to being livable anyways matter of fact it was more than that it was looking great the last week would be a lot of little fixes inside and the painting of the house itself inside and out it would also bring me almost face to face with a monster the eerie feelings grew each day that week as I worked on the side and the inside of the house. It was as if there were something else around and that feeling of impending, well, not doom, but, but something. It was weird. I called Troy, the owner, a friend of mine, and told him the weirdness again. And of course, once again, he shrugged it off as nothing but my imagination staying that far out in the woods and country. Still, I felt like every time I was to open a door, look out a window, or even turn a corner in the house, I was going to run into something. Something bad, too. I did it, though. I, and I quote Troy, manned up and got to work. However, at night, when it got really, really quiet, I listened to it. The darkness, that is, outside, and heard some very strange things. The night after I called Troy, I left the second-story window open and just laid there listening to the crickets. But there weren't any at one point. They just stopped all of a sudden, all at once. Seconds later, I heard what seemed to be someone walking through the backyard. I was not sure if it was two or four-legged, but it was moving through the yard and seemed rather heavy-footed for sure. I, didn't, it did not, I did not sneak quietly to the window to see if I could spot whatever it was, but it was too dark. And without the full moon just yet, there was almost no light at all back there. Still, I heard the foot and hoof or hoof fall, and despite <clears throat> and deep inside, I hoped for the hoof. Two nights later, I got a pretty good scare, and one that should have had me leaving immediately. The shadow. It was a long day towards the end of the fourth week, and all I had left was to paint the outside of the house. It was Friday night, and that I know for sure and it was a TGIF kind of day, too. I was having massive issues with some plumbing in the upstairs bathroom five to six hours later and a ton of sweat, and the problem was solved. So with all but the painting uh, was done, I decided to let that go and start in Saturday morning. I hung out on the porch until dusk around that time. I started hearing that crazy wailing again, and I heard it the night before, too. But, as it started, I moved indoors. I left the upstairs windows open, and after a few minutes that sound was gone, and the pitch black of night fell. I looked out the window and noticed it was not as dark as usual because the moon was now full, or almost full. <clears throat> that was kind of a relief. Kind of. I headed to bed after a couple of beers and some burritos I picked up back in town that late afternoon. I was not tired, however, and decided to at least get the place cleaned up downstairs a bit. I had all the lights off but the kitchen I was in. After a few minutes, I had to take a leak. Uh, I was coming back through the living room from the bathroom when I spotted a fast-moving shadow on the other side of the sliding glass door that led through the dining room and kitchen. It was a large, dark. It was large, dark, and really fast. I had no idea what it was. It moved so fast, but it was something. And it was something massive, as it took up the whole view through that glass door. I thought for a moment that it seemed like it was on two legs, but I was not sure. Either way, I was freaked out and stayed out of the kitchen for the rest of the evening and locked all the doors. I headed back upstairs, took a quick shower with my head outside the curtain half the time, and finally headed to bed. I saw no more that night, nor did I hear the things that go bump in the night. The next day I was painting all day. It took nine to ten whole hours, but I painted that place with a sprayer. I simply taped the sides as I went and sprayed. It worked out wonderfully. I was done. Face in the... It was almost 4 p.m. <clears throat> in the afternoon when I stopped, cleaned up, and even packed everything but myself into the truck and trailer. I would stay one more night because I was tired, too tired to drive four or five hours. I should have left. I turned in around 10 p.m. that Saturday night. The moon was still quite full, and I could see everything outside pretty well except into the tree line. That was still always pitch black. I left the lights off after I took a shower, 
I ate on the bedroom floor in one of the upper rooms I was staying in, and I ate with only the light from the moon coming through the curtainless windows. I was thirsty again and wanted to have a glass of water before bed instead of a beer. I headed downstairs to get a glass when I saw it. I did not turn on any lights on the way down. The light of the moon through the windows and the large skylights in the roof lit my way. <clears throat> I hit the main floor and I was heading to the kitchen when I realized what I'd seen. Yeah, I saw it and I kept walking as if I didn't see it. I just didn't realize it at first. It didn't hit my brain. I stopped finally turned around completely and looked out past the porch through a tall, wide picture window in the living room. And there it was, standing as still as a statue just staring at the house, red glowing eyes and all, a Bigfoot. Just as I started to freak out and scream, it moved, and really fast to the other side of the house and living room I was in. Faster than I could flush a toilet, that thing was literally feet from me just staring into the living room I was standing in the middle of. <clears throat> it was staring at me. At least I thought it was. This whole time I was trying to ignore what I knew. Bigfoot was roaming around the property and hillsides around the area, and one that did not look too friendly either. It was hard to tell every feature of this thing, but I got a pretty good and long look at it before it did something unexpected. It looked like, in the light, that was visible. Well, like a monkey or a gorilla, I guess flat nose, sort of long face, but round in general. Uh, the skin was not all that dark, but it had kind of a gray tint or glow in the light to it. It had it, its head sat right on top of the shoulders, little or no neck I could see. <clears throat> it was literally eight to six, eight foot, six to eight inches tall, for sure. I know those windows, and this thing was well above them, almost hunched over a bit at the waist to look down and in through them. It was showing teeth, and they were wide enough to tell that they were, well, some were at least, sharp. And it was breathing heavy with a nasty-looking scowl and wrinkled forehead as it st stared into the house. It could not see me. I could tell that much as its eyes just moved around in the dark. So instead of moving, I stood completely still and stared at the monster outside. Suddenly... Without any sound, it jerked its head and body back up and slammed one of its big hands against the window. It did not break, break thank goodness. It turned, walked off, but not before it started screaming. It was so loud I had to put my hands over my ears. <clears throat> it almost hurt it was so loud. I knew at that moment that this thing was not nice at all, and if I, and if it knew any better, it would have come into the house and do Lord knows what. Bye-bye, Joseph. Troy flipped out a bit at my news, but he was not going to say a word about it, <clears throat> ever. Me, I packed up the next morning with eyes in the back of my head and peeled out of there. And I'll never go back, ever. Even when it comes to a few, uh, even when it came to a few fixes that were needed a few months later, I told Troy no. Apparently, the scratch marks in the house were back again. He found a local to get it done instead. But that is my story. Thanks. Sean.